best I can do. Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, I, I, I can't, because then I can't read my text. <laughs> Wing it. <laughs> when I was asked to talk about our path into the future tonight, I was reminded by reminded of a brief scene uh, from the movie Life of Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's followers become his pursuers. They chase him down an alley, chanting, "Show us the way! Show us the way, Master!" Finally, they corner him, and he says, listen, listen to me, people. I can't show you the way. You must discover it in yourselves. And they say, oh, yes, master. Yes, great master. Tell us more. <laughs> right now, I feel just like Brian. <laughs> But I will try to tell you, well, not exactly what will happen next. We have a few ideas. But how things happen next. I want to first talk to you about how the Ten Principles got written. Has anybody ever wondered? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's back in 2004. Uh, at, at least four years after the regional movement had already begun to announce itself. Uh, this is very well worth remembering. Uh, I'm speaking to this specifically to the regionals now because uh, you started it. No, we just caught up. We simply acted, in fact, in aid of your efforts. And once they had begun to coalesce, uh, we, we, just, we simply took advantage of our, a somewhat elevated perspective at the center uh, and, and decided to uh, uh, act uh, in aid of what you were all doing. In fact, uh, the Ten Principles finally uh, turned out to be a collaborative effort. Uh, the people who were then regionals, uh, I, I collaborated with them. Uh, I put out a draft of it and, and then uh, 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 fed some ideas back and, and some of those things are incorporated into the, the, the current document. Um, what I did is, uh, we, we, I was told by the regional committee that I, I should write this. And so I took a plane down to Mazatlan and, uh, and I stayed there with Rod Garrett. Some of you may know him, he's our uh, uh, city designer. And he had a house there that he purchased and uh, fixed up and then Rod being who he is, being a city designer, began to redesign all Mazatlan. He began to one house at a time. He hired, he got a partner, he had a partner, a young man who was, a, who was an architect there, formed a partnership with him, and I don't know, he's done five or six of them now. And um, every day, uh, I, this was in the old town. And most of Mazatlan is kind of a, is an awful mess, but at, at the very center of it is the old town. And it's not really much of a tourist destination, but, but uh, I, what I did is I walked down to the local Zocalo, which is a civic plaza. And I stationed myself at, uh, at a sidewalk cafe. Now this is a great place. Um, at one end was a municipal uh, art school, and at the other end was a museum, and there were site walk cafes all around. And every day uh, there was a public concert uh, at the bandstand at the, in the center of the space. Uh, young art students uh, flocked through it. 
uh, whole families prom promenade prom promenade promenade <laughs> and uh, and it, which was touching. Uh, they, they were like the, the father and mother goose, and they were like little little, little children. And their families like goslings would, would come in behind them, and, and it was very loud. Uh, there was dancing, there was singing, uh, and none of this was done for tourists. It's just not a, really a tourist spot. Uh, and most days I was the only Yankee in the place. They were doing it for themselves. And there was, uh, uh, in the middle of my stay, there was a beauty contest that, that, uh, that, that went through, uh, floats through all the streets that ended up in the plaza. And uh, as I walked around, uh, poked around the town, I realized when these people weren't singing and dancing and carrying on in the plaza, they were rehearsing singing and dancing. <laughs> you, you could hear them through the walls and the windows and the streets. And uh, so I sat there every afternoon, smoking cigarettes, drinking coffee, hunched over my computer. And to the constant stream of locals who drifted by, I think I look like some sort of giant white termite on speed. <laughs> <laughs> but for my part, as I watched all this interaction, it seemed to me like some great nutrient upwelling, like a vast bloom of plankton in the sea. This is the very food of culture that was going on around me. And, it, 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 the, and I thought, well, this is, the, the Zocalo is just like the Center Cap Cafe in Black Rock City. And I thought, well, the Burning Man Project is a kind of portable Zocalo that's adapted to uh, to produce culture in the 21st century because we live in a world that isn't marked by these constancies of time and this continuity in space and, and isn't bolstered by tradition. We don't have a clue. We, we live in a, a world that lies in shards. And, and, and we need to invite, invent some way to turn this into a movable feast. So I got all charged up. And, and I came back to the city, and I walked in the regional committee room, and I said, I have the nine principles. <laughs> and they said, well, uh, Larry, uh, uh, shouldn't there be ten? <laughs> well, I... I already gone to Mazatlan, <laughs> and I didn't have the air for from Mount, for Mount Sinai, <laughs> so I went home and thought about it. You know, all that time working in the Zocalo, I, I've been, you know what I've been doing? I've been thinking about uh, all the experiences that it, it, it brought me and, and and us, everyone who worked on the project over all these years, to, to that point in time. Uh, and, oh, I went back to the beginning. I, I thought about how I, uh, every, everybody knows this story. I called Jerry James and I said, let's burn a man on the beach. And, and uh, it was an artist's motive, I suppose. No, I didn't think of myself as an artist. I, it was just that uh, something, uh, there was something in me that had to find a presence in the world. And of course, we call that today radical self-expression. Ah, at first principle. Uh, I thought about, have we taken the figure down to the beach and having built it in a garage, 